taking the poetry outside of the classroom and, and into the community, you know, um, it seems almost like a literary citizenship, maybe, of, of a, a, an homage to the community of, of poets and writers to, to take this and, and bring it to the, the individuals, you know? Well, I mean, I, I believe in that. I think that I've, I inherited this idea that poetry was this elitist thing that only belonged to a certain class and um, level of educated individuals. But, uh, but I think poetry belongs to people. You know, it's an oral tradition, you know, that most, you know, most uh, indigenous people have an oral tradition, you know, so it makes it easier for me coming from people who like stories mm -hmm. to, to embrace poetry, to embrace storytelling, to embrace, you know, uh, challenging this, those old stories. Um, and so in this case, you know, this, this is a graduate course uh, my students are required to to create a unit of poetry that they give away to some deserving or desiring entity in the community. It, it has to be in the community. They have to get off campus and they have to go find it. You know, so the first three that came through today were all connected to the to the women's center at the Salvation Army, uh, and those they've never had a poetry opportunity in that space, and they're excited about. I'm so excited, they booked three already. Um, so between, you know, there's a middle school in a, uh, in a high risk neighborhood, um, it's gonna be a target. Um, the Hope Center, that's all male, uh, and has a lot of substance abusers, mm -hmm. uh, or people recovering. Um, you know, and it also mirrors my own work. You know, I do a lot of work in prisons and juvenile detention centers around the country. Um, and visit schools at every level, from elementary up to to post professional. Uh, teach workshops around the country and out in the woods, you know, out in <laughs> in the most rural parts of Oregon, uh, where instead of traffic, what you hear in the background is the water rushing down the mountain, uh, ten feet from the cabin. Uh, but it's soothing, but it's powerful because it's going downhill. But you know, poetry belongs in all those spaces, and it belongs to everybody who has a voice. And so, part of my job and part of my um, kind of tradition, I've you know embraced and married myself to as part of the Appalachian Poets is you know we we're trying to give voice to people who have been muted or had their stories left out of of history. And York is one prominent example of that. You know, nobody knew about him uh, until these new books about him sprung into being. Um, and there are a lot of other people that their story has been either undertowed or they've been left out. And so to me, it's just, you know, those are thousands of books that have to be written. I can't write them all. Mm -hmm. So I have to teach and encourage, maybe if one person here does it, one of my students is actually writing a, a, a collection of persona poems about Josh Gibson, Negro League baseball player. Um, so I, I know it's working and, you know, I get to watch his work, read his work, edit his work, and also at the same time, try to connect him with the publishing world. You know, mm -hmm. so you know, he's already got some some bites. You know, people interested in this, and it's not even finished with the manuscript yet. So that's awesome. Yeah, so he he will leave here with a book mm -hmm. contract most likely by next year. He'll be finished this year with the book, and then have six months to kind of negotiate with different presses. So yeah, that's great. I mean, what uh, you know, what better way to to culminate a teacher-student relationship, you know? To, to, yeah, to be at that reading to say, yeah, that happened in my classroom, <laughs> that's right.